Cityscape Bar in the Holiday Inn, Mart Plaza, Chicago. I'm Natasha Karecki, and this is Off Message, our weekly political talk show. Today we will be doing a tribute to Judy Bartopinka, a very sudden passing. Neil, you, you were up at 3, 3.30 in the morning writing an obit. Um, were you shocked by this? I was. I mean, Judy, she, she's the last, I mean, you never expect people to die, but she was such a force of nature. I mean, everyone loved Judy Bartopinka. She crossed boundaries. She was a Republican, but she, she unlike most Republicans, she was crazy in a good way, and, and people really loved her. Uh, Rod Blagojevich uh, once called her a, a kooky old aunt. She was everyone's mm -hmm. kooky old aunt. Like, you know, she played the accordion. Okay, and she kept dogs, and even as comptroller, she started a pet rescue service, and she was always, she, she loved her job, she loved being treasurer, she loved being comptroller, she had, I mean, she was good in the sense that, that, that her, her quirky personality wouldn't have worked if she was an incompetent like many people in her field, right. but she actually was always pushing to make, she was a good public servant. And I think that I don't want to lose, in all her quirks, you know, and I don't want to lose sight of the fact that she did her job well. What I appreciated was the Comptroller's website and you're being able to go on to and, and figure out, you know, all the state employees, there's like all these great databases right on her website. You can look up all kinds of information. She made it very public and accessible and easy, which as we know with state, county, city government is you never. You go to Bond Court, they're using yeah. carbon paper. No, <laughs> seriously, so you, you, you know, she came in and she really tried to modernize things, tried to streamline things, and I think that's why she survived. All the quirks and the, the dogs and everything wouldn't have mattered if she, if she wasn't doing her job. And I think that's why she got elected. I, I think she survived really because people really liked her. They connected with her personality. Uh, she wasn't a Republican, she wasn't a Democrat, and a lot of, in the eyes of a lot of people, she was just Judy. And she stayed connected with the media. She would always send me little notes about my column, you know, uh, circling certain things about it and agreeing with it or disagreeing, but she would always communicate. Uh, I, I just think that she kind of represented in Illinois a different kind of, of politician. And at a time when there was so much uh, partisan fighting, there was so many, such a big fight in the Republican Party over conservatives and what, you know, an extremist and what role they would play, she was always able to come out and say, honestly, this is idiotic, this is extreme, or this is outrageous. And that's not something that you hear people, you know, Republicans kind of dissing other Republicans. She was able to do that and get away with it. And I think part of it, you know, the point about the website, I mean, she started off as a reporter, not to toot her own horns, but, you know, she, she brought a reporter sensibility through her whole career. You know, she was blunt, she kind of had gallows humor, she was, she didn't take herself or, or anyone else too seriously, and it also informed her work. You know, it was really important to her that the website was transparent and that government be honest and call out, you know, when it, it's failures and corruption. And she felt compelled to go into politics because she... She went to Medill and she was a journalist for about 10 years and she was basically disgusted by the corruption she saw and she decided rather than just report it that she was going to try to help. And so she ran for state legislature and she was a, a rep for about 10 years in Springfield, then became a senator. And then, I mean, she was sort of swept in to give a bit of history for people who might not be familiar. Uh, when Jim Edgar ran in 94, there was kind of a little Republican wave. Mm -hmm. And so she, you know, Republicans are always struggling in Illinois. And so she sort of snuck in under the wing of Jim Edgar and stayed. Right. And okay. for a long time, right, she was the only Republican Right, so after George Ryan and, and all the scandal tied to him, a Republican couldn't get elected in Illinois except for Judy Bart Topinka, Robert right? Robert Goyevich. And, and, and Judy Bart, and this, here's the interesting thing about her is that uh, when she was elected chair of the GOP, uh, she came in at a time when, of course, everything was in chaos, but at a time when uh, the unknown, um, now the President of the United States, Barack Obama was really starting his career, and she was the only one that could see that while everybody else was concentrating on Jack Ryan's sex life and concentrating on Alan Key's outrageous and idiotic statements, no one was watching what Barack Obama was doing. She did see that? She did see that. So she's very likable. She, she's the only Republican to sort of uh, survive the, the George Ryan, you know, post-Republican onslaught on Republicans. But Let's talk about the Bogoyevich, because that was yeah. probably where most people ended up really. She came on the scene, all the ads. Why wasn't she able to beat back Rod Bogoyevich, who at that time was already... He was on his way to... I mean, it's, it's sort of sad. Maybe it has to do with sexism. Maybe it has to do with her age. Uh, uh, she ran for governor against Bogoyevich in 2006, and um, he beat her. 
he, he taught, you know, George Ryan was his boss. He had a video of her doing the polka with Ryan at the uh, Illinois State Fair, and they broadcast that endlessly on TV and basically said, Ryan's corrupt and so is she, which is funny the fact, when you, when you look at Blagojevich saying it, considering where he ends up, where he is today. She had the Don Clark next problem, and that is, I uh, wasn't taken seriously for the office of governor. It was sexism. Uh, I also think that, you know, something about Illinois, we like those flashy, dashy guys that come on the scene. And we think that they're, they're, they're gonna do a great job. And that's how Blagojevich came on the scene. He was, you know, Elvis impersonator practically. You know, he was funny. Uh, and he just kind of overshadowed her campaign. And that was the flip side of her being so outspoken is that uh, she was painted as being trivial. I mean, in 2006, she called her fellow Republicans morons. <laughs> which idiots. is a, a dry journalistic <laughs> description as far as I'm concerned. But, you know, and, and, and you know, Bush was in the White House then. She basically said that I'll take the money, but if Bush wants to campaign for me, he should what, campaign at midnight, like, you know, in, some, in an undisclosed location. I think was her line. And so you just, I remember I had lunch with her uh, in 2006, and I remember thinking, boy, if she's going to be governor, why is she having lunch with me? So, you know, there, there was like a little, there was just some aspect to like her. too accessible. Yeah, too accessible. She didn't, she seemed, she, it, was, it was like your, your old Aunt uh, Judy, whether she's going to be governor or not. Maybe that's sexism, maybe that's just. Sexism. She, well, and maybe she was also, you know, Blagojevich was a fresh face, and she had been around a long time. There's, whether you're male or female, there's an element of that that she, he was just the sexy new guy. Although not to toot my own horn, in 2006 I did do a column saying that the choice is between uh, Blagojevich and Pat, or between uh, Judy Barr and Pat Quinn because Blagojevich is going to end up in prison. Oh, she did. nicely done. Yeah. Yeah, I, have to, I, have to, I have to post that one. So we have you to blame, basically. I know. I, I, have, my, I, I have my don't blame me, I voted for Judy sticker. I voted for her. I'm a Democrat. You know, that's, that's the thing about and, and her. That, yeah, that was an interesting thing. I remember when uh, she... Uh, one, I don't know what election she won, so many of them, but I was in Springfield and I went to her party. Uh, and she looked around the room and she saw me there and she's like, you're here? Because she kind of figured, well, you got to be a Democrat, you're not a Republican, what are you doing at my party? But she was welcoming, she was uh, the kind of person where you didn't put a label on. And even in this, uh, in her last campaign, uh, when she was running, you know, running against Sheila Simon and Simon was coming out and making all these kind of claims about her connection to the Bogorovich years and all of that. But uh, she did a commercial where she was out at yard sales picking through people's leftovers and really kind of communicating that she is a good watchman for the state's money. You know, and I thought that that's the kind of thing that really kind of crystallizes who she really she is. She played that up, and part of that was an image. And, and I guess speaking of Sheila Simon, we should point out she barely beat her. Okay, it was like 1.8 million to 1.7 million or something. So you know, a win is a win. I'm not saying I'm not taking that away. I'm just saying is it, it's not like she crushed Sheila Simon, who who you know had her own issues, but but that you know uh, there were people who were ready to bring. Yeah, there wasn't else. a whole lot of mudslinging in that in that race. Uh, it, certainly not by Judy Bartopinka. Yeah. It, it didn't seem no. like that was really her way of doing that, things. No. I think yeah. she viewed Sheila Simon as a lightweight. You know, someone who would kind of I mean, lieutenant governor is the traditional lightweight role, right? And and I, I think she just saw her as someone who had a famous name, and I mean, she's a nice enough woman, but she just I, I don't think she took it seriously. Well, also I think you know, Sheila was the underdog, so J Judy didn't feel like I mean, Sheila Simon slung some mud at, at Topinka, but I don't think Topinka felt she needed to respond in to kind. To give it back, one of my. Uh, memories of her, well, just recently, this last election, there was a video that surfaced, um, and this just happened in a year ago, uh, where after a bill signing, Governor Quinn signs the bill, they're all hanging out, um, Judy Bartopinka walks up to him moments later with the mic still on and asks him if he can get her son a job. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes, she loved yes her I remember son that. <laughs> and, and was a love doting parent. And yeah. you know, anyone else, I think that would have really you know, derailed their, you know, political aspirations or whatnot. She just sort of, you know, later on we caught up with her and she's like, yeah, I did. I'm always looking for a job. I'm, I'm asking everybody about my son. Yeah. I, you know, he's back here from the military and. She was know. very loving. She loved her, her, her child. She loved her granddaughter, that she had a new granddaughter. And so I think, you know, I was thinking of Dan Rutherford, her, her successor and all the trouble he got in with his subordinates and things. And I think she ran a pretty, a pretty open, tight ship with her office. And so she didn't have that kind of trouble with disgruntled aides dropping a dime on her and that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Well, at, at this taping, we still don't know what's going to happen with the future of that office, um, but I'm wondering what your 
predictions are. We have, um, you know, I, the, the Illinois Constitution appears that the, the governor can appoint if there's a vacancy. Um, however, right, we're between. We're in between, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, there might be a little bit of a fight. Well, it's a tough question, right? Because you know, it's by by his rights, it's it's Quinn's appointment, but. Is that the right thing to do? He's only got a few weeks left, plus she was a Republican, and we have an incoming Bruce Rauner Republican. I, I, I can I sort of see both sides to that. I That's would a think tough that Quinn would want to avoid this one and show a little class by stepping back and letting Rauner have this appointment. But he just appointed his I, This is the reason why I'm saying campaign now, manager and, in this regard, he should show a little class because he's already put in an appointment. He's already got roundly criticized by the media for that. And I just think that he will step back and, or I would hope that he would step back and let Rana have it. If he didn't, he could stick in Sheila Simon. She got 1.7 million votes. So, you know, obviously somebody wants her, but I agree with Mary. One hopes that Quinn doesn't want to, you know, that he skips out the door. There's no upside for him to appoint I somebody. Mean, a couple hours after her passing was reported, um, you know, Tom Cross's name was already surfacing, and uh, and yes, Sheila Simon. People suggest he's going to appoint himself as a job, but I don't, I don't see him doing that either. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's you know, been, I hope the Governor first time. Quinn. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I it's can't a big see, step down. I think yeah, he's going to teach. I can't see that happening. Yeah, yeah I can't imagine. I mean, those are the two names that, of course, come to mind right away: Tom Cross, who ran for treasurer, and then Sheila Simon, who ran for the controller job. Can you? I can't really think of anyone else. A, an obvious choice for this job. Oh, they made such a big fuss about Stephanie Neely. Maybe they can get her to come back from the bank there. at private yeah. industry and yeah, take Rauner over their can jobs. appoint Stephanie Neely, you're right. She wants to take the pay cut. Yeah, <laughs> I would say. Okay, well, let's close up um, with uh, a, a favorite Judy Bartopinka quote or favorite moment. Um, I'm a political mutt, she called herself. She <laughs> loved dogs and she was happy to put herself in their category and, and she was, she really was. She was a, a comfortable, sort of a blend of different things and, and uh, so that, that's my, the Judy quote that on the top of my head. Okay. Uh, the picture of Judy in my mind is in 2008 when she was uh, GOP chair and she was under assault by everyone because Alan Key's uh, his name uh, came to the surface after Jack Ryan had that big, you know, sex scandal. And she described herself as ha not having wanted this job, but since she had the job, she got it because she was the last one standing. Mm -hmm. uh, and my favorite is um, what she said when, when she was tarred by Blagojevich for the, this video of her dancing the polka with George Ryan, who had just been convicted. She says, I dance the polka with everyone, <laughs> which I just thought was perfect. That's true. <laughs> and um, I'm going to go with the moment Governor Quinn signed same-sex marriage into law. Um, it was at the USC Pavilion. It was packed in there. There was tons of people, lots of politicians um, sort of juggling for the spotlight. And when she went up there, she, you know, she gave a good speech and volunteered to be anyone's flower girl. I am available to be a flower girl, and I'll even wave the feet. It was just, you know, very emblematic of how she was able to light up a room. So with that, thank you very much for the wonderful tribute. And thank you to our viewers. We will see you next week on Off Message.